So how to save the world? Um, Nicholas made a good argument. The world is crossing the digital divide right now. And we need devices for everybody, for all of the world, in a way that they can access the information, a world of information. And my area of expertise, the display, is actually the key. Because it's the most expensive part in the device, because it's the most power hungry, and because it's how our brains work. 70% of our brains are used to process visual information. And that is indeed how the computer interacts with the human. It's the bottleneck. And the, the displays really are a problem for many reasons, but the way to cross the digital divide is to innovate in devices much more quickly than we have been doing. To date, innovation to the market is a bit like a BMW, very high-end, very expensive, and the features and benefits of the BMW eventually trickle down to the other mass devices. Indeed, the Apple iPad has achieved great commercial success this year. But that's 40 years of innovation in tablets through the technology community that have been now embodied in a device that's hit the market. It takes too long. I can give you many more examples, but what I believe we really need to do is to start taking that power of device innovation and applying it to the bottom of the pyramid. Because if we can pull it off, we can extend the base and the height of the pyramid instantly and really make things happen. And I think that's what we did at One Laptop Per Child, and we can continue to do with more devices. But, you know, just to give you an idea of what's happened in the last decade, the device volume has absolutely gone through the roof. There are five billion cell phones now deployed in the world. There's seven billion people and five billion cell phones. Most people on Earth now do have some form of access to cellular mobile phone technology. But where the information really is, is digital and computing. We need better displays and devices. There's two bil billion computers out there right now. This is all about scale to reach the, the masses. And it, it's, it's, going, it's going bigger. If you think about it, in 10 years, you'll have a cell phone, uh, a tablet, a computer of some sort, a TV, a medical reading devices. Each person will have five to 10 devices. This is about scale. And in order to do that, you can no longer lovingly handcraft a prototype device in the lab and eventually build, you know, invent a new molecule and build a new fab. You have to think about how to use the fabs that exist. It used to be, even 10 years ago, you could ship a product that shipped, eh, started with 10,000 units a month, and that would be okay. Well, now when you design a device, you better be able to move 10 million, 100 million of them. And to do that, you've got to understand how things are produced. The factories of the world are in Asia. Every single screen in the world is made in Asia. Most of the chips, most of the computers, most of the cell phones. That can change. It can move to other countries. But we lost our manufacturing base in the US. You've lost it in Europe. If you're a gifted hardware designer sitting in Brussels or Boston or Berkeley, lots of luck. You've got to go to Asia. You've got to live, sleep, work, and viscerally understand how the factories work in order to innovate it and create something really that can skip three generations. So that's what we're trying to do. In display itself, I've, I've carted around various versions of this slide for about a decade. These technologies, flexible, 3D, displays on every surface, transparent, unbreakable, they, they never hit. They're always a year away. And I'm here to tell you today, we can do all of this. We can do all of this with existing factory infrastructure, with LCD, with the, 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 the display technology of our time, just like we can design 
new computer chips using existing silicon fabs. It's really not any different. You just really need to deeply understand the processes and the process excursions and influence the roadmap to change this piece of equipment out in the fab in order to be able to achieve that. So that's, this is what I'm working on and many are working on in, in Asia right now. And, and the reason is actually quite profound. Many people in the audience probably believe, you know, OLED or different types of technologies are, are next year. Well, the last five years and the next five years are depicted on this on this bar graph, and if you can't read it, that's okay. The thing in blue, that's LCD. The thing that's not blue, that's everything else. That's out through 2015. Again, to hit this kind of scale, 50 billion devices we're talking about, they all need screens. We need a working, stable, predictable manufacturing infrastructure. There's one. We can do lots of different things with it, but, um, you know, we've got to, We've got to use that fab structure. So another example, the why you should care about displays. Well, I've asked a question a lot, and I've only ever heard one answer to this sort of A or B question. Do you want your batteries to last longer or not so long? There's one answer, longer, right? And if you look at the power Pareto of, say, a typical smartphone, a smartphones no longer last the whole day on a battery charge if you really use them with a lot of the new features. The screen is, takes half the energy. We can do a lot about improving um, the screen power draw. Ours are 10x lower, for example. But in the, in the Apple iPad, the screen takes 75% of the power. So if you want to make a tablet lighter or less expensive or less power hungry, you really have to start at the screen. Next generation LCD will not just be 10x lower power consumption, but 100x lower power consumption. The, the screens will be as easy to read as, as paper is today. Flexible, built-in eye tracking, knows where your eyes are, touch sensitive. All sorts of different things that we can do using existing or slightly modified LCD fabs today that we're bringing on board, including flexible and super slim and so forth. That's happening. We, again, the screen really is the bottleneck between us and the information of the world. The information of the world is now digital, and the way we access it is through this. So, you know, increasingly, the screen itself, when you look at a tablet or a cell phone, what you see is a screen with some, some, some housing around it. And increasingly, it's the screen and a radio as we move so much more into the cloud and 70% of our minds in people with normal vision are used to process, these Im to process images. So that's you know, really why you care. So here's an example of, of you know, what, what, what we did at One Laptop Per Child. Um, I, it was my uh, privilege to get to lead the architecture of the design of the hardware of the One Laptop Per Child. And as a screen designer, I led with the screen, the most expensive, most power-hungry component, made it sunlight readable. School can be you know, underneath a tree in Africa. Very um, high resolution, great for reading, and extremely low power. So that screen really, and, and the power management system behind it, led to the creation of a, the lowest cost laptop ever made, but the lowest power laptop ever made. Kids in Peru live on, on one battery charge a week, and you've got to make you know, not just a 10-watt laptop, this is a one-watt laptop. This spurred, Nicholas has talked about the two million units in the field today, but this spurred the netbook revolution. A hundred million kind of copycats of this have shipped over the last three years in the form of netbooks, unfortunately with higher power management. Um, higher power consumption, excuse me. And so uh, what I did is I spun out of one laptop per child and decided to create um, more screens and more low power management systems and more focus on, on innovating at the bottom of the pyramid across the, the, the board. And we have screens that are lower power, sort of about the power draw of e-ink right now in all different sizes, working with all different factories. And we're achieving really great you know, image performance that 
that, that's comparable with OLED or the best LCD screens out there. All of this by working and living and sleeping and you know, viscerally experiencing and understanding deeply how the fabs work, and we're adding to that, you know, new forms of 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 display uh, interaction through through eye tracking, knowing where your eyes are, through touch interaction, through slimness, through flexibility, and 3D, and many many other things. So that's coming online, and I guess in conclusion, you know, we really, I believe are going about design wrong. We need to leverage the commodity production facilities of the world in order to innovate uh, in a more quick way on devices, which are the, the bottleneck for crossing the digital divide. Thank you very much.